Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm actually going over the game Magic Legends and if it's worth your time to play or not. Currently, it is in open beta form, so it's not a complete game, which a lot of games are doing that now, saying like, oh, you know, it's in beta, bro. It's all good. But hopefully by the end of this video, you have enough information about the game so you can see if you like this game or not or if it's worth your time or not. If you like this video or if it gives you any information that helps you out in one way or another, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. So in Magic the Gathering, the RPG game, it actually starts with choosing your class. The first class out of the five is... A Geomancer, which uses the red mana. The class abilities that she comes with are Magma Fist, which punches enemies in front of you. Volcanic Fury, which deals damage to nearby foes, consuming some of your shield. And then Furious Sleep, which she leaps forward for short distances and punches the ground to damage and impact your enemies. She would be considered almost like the fighting class in an RPG game. The next class is the green mana called the Beast Caller. She is also a melee class, but uses an axe instead of her fist to fight. Her abilities consist of Wild Slash, which cleave nearby foes with your Aether Axe, Rendering Throw, which hurls an axe to damage and mark foes in front of you, and Wild Roar, which heals yourself and your companions instantly. So she is considered to be a class more like a fighting with an axe, but also can heal herself and your homies, that's what you want to say. The next class we have is the white mana called the Sanctifier. Sanctifier is considered to be like the healing class. It does most of the damage from far away. His abilities are Divine Bolt, which is fire piercing bolts of holy energy at a distance to fight enemies. Wave of Radiance, which creates a wave of holy energy dealing damage to enemies. And Salvation, which gains a devotion counter. You and creatures you control are healed. Create a 4-4 white angel token with lifelink for 20 seconds. This character starts to add a little bit more of Magic the Gathering into, which is also something cool to see. The next class we have is from the blue mana called the Mind Mage. The simplest category for the Mind Mage is obviously the Sorcerer. He does damage from far away with his magic. His class abilities are Mind Blast, which blasts enemies in front of you with a barrage of energy orb. Confound, which deals damage to foes and a cone right in front of you, which also confuses random foes while not killing them. And Illusionary Escape, which taunts foes with an illusion of yourself and gains increased amount of speed. And then the final class for the magic RPG that we saw from the Black Mana is a Necromancer, which if we've played any of the RPG type of games, we kind of know where that's going to go. He attacks from a moderate distance with dark magic, summoning an army of undead to assist them in combat. His class abilities are Grim Siphon, which launches foes in front of you with necromantic pendulum dealing damage plus additional damage over time. It also has a Grave Unheal, which deals damage to foes in an area around a target. Then creates a 1-1 one, one skeleton creatures token for 30 seconds at that location. And then his last class ability is Necromantic Aura, which sacrifices any active skeletons from grave upheaving to empower an aura that damages nearby enemies for a short time. So right now those are the five classes you can choose from Magic the Gathering. They all have their strengths and their weaknesses depending on your type of playstyle. If you're more into just jumping in there and fighting fist first, thinking later. You probably want to go more with the Geomancer or the Beast Caller because those seem to be one of the two strongest fighting melee combat damage type characters. If you want to be pretty much the healer, you're going to choose Sanctifier for the most part. It seems to be the obvious option for fighting and also being able to heal your homies at the same time. And if you're more of the Sorcerer type character, you're either going to choose Mind Mage or Necromancer. I think it depends if you like to just do damage straight up with just magic, like you're shooting fireballs or whatnot, then you'd probably choose the normal Mind Mage kind of character. And if you like to just summon creatures to fight for you, or you know, you do some damage while having creatures fight with you, Necromancer is going to be the obvious choice. Like most RPGs, you get to hood and choose their body body type you can be a female or a male depending on what you want to be you also get to choose a face for them which you can't really tell but you can kind of get closer up to see which ones you guys want skin tones like most rpgs you can change the skin tone as well hair make it look like dragon ball z you can also put facial hair make your guy look like a chad so the view is pretty simple from the top you move left right with a s d and w you click on your creatures to shoot or attack depending on what kind of attack you decide you want to do you do quests just like any RPG. The right mouse makes it so you can change the angle of your camera. Q and E are the abilities you can use, which are located at the very bottom that you can see, which has a cooldown. And once your cooldown is done, you can use your abilities once again. And just like the card game, you also get spells that are from the card game that are translated into the video game. Here are some of the examples. Well, as I was playing the white healer character, Divine Wrath, two mana, and then at least one sun. Deal 640 damage to stun foes at target location for four seconds. And then Judgment, which was a sorcery as well. Two sun mana, and then three random mana to deal 482 damage to nearby foes as well. That's kind of one cool thing that they do add to the game that makes it a lot funner. If you like Magic the Gathering the card game. The counter on the bottom shows you how much 
mana you have and how many each spell costs to summon or use the mana. There's also a time limit to be able to use the spell once again, which adds a little fun more element to the game. Like if we're actually taking turns in real life, waiting for your mana to untap. And just like in Magic the Gathering, when you use your mana to summon a creature spell, you can also summon creatures. Here's an example when I was using the White Planeswalker, Chains Warden. His DPS was 8 and his health was 1100. It cost 3 mana to summon him, stuns foes at target location 4 seconds and deals 25 damage to all this. Another weird kind of cool feature that they did have in the game is called Spell Hand. So every time you cast a spell, it removes from your hand. So you have a whole bunch of spells that you can do, but every time you use one, another one will appear that's random. Eventually it becomes part of the strategy when you're playing the game, so it actually makes it a little harder and a little different than most RPG games. They also had bosses that you fought, which were pretty awesome. They were just fun additions to the game, obviously. Made it fun and challenging to make you try different strategies to defeat the boss. At the end of all the missions, it shows you what you've earned from that game. Sorceries, creatures, anything that you got from this mission. It's fun to see that they have actual creatures from the magic game, and that's their in card form. Look at this guy. The Grotech Bush Hacker. He's right there just chilling. Even this tamed spider is a creature from the game Magic the Gathering. The Green Warden is a character in Magic that's also in this game, which was kind of cool. This is a beta game, so I countered a few bugs while I was playing. I'm sure the developers were eventually going to fix it, so I don't think we have to worry about that. We encountered elementals in the game, just like the freaking real life cards. No spoilers, this is like the first level, so it's not like you're going to be like, Whoa, what's going on? And then one cool feature they had randomly were Arena parts which were fun. So while you're going through missions or through some of the quests you would find arenas and before entering arena there was a few tips that would tell you what's gonna go on. I don't want to spoil much for you so I'm not gonna tell you but you can just play it to figure it out. You also do level up in the game. I reached level 2. So they do have a, a leveling up system in the game. It does have multiplayer which most RPG games do. You can invite people to a party and you and your friends can go ahead and go on adventures, fight monsters and all that other fun stuff together so that's always just a bonus for most online games especially when it's free you're trying to find a game to play with all the homies so how the leveling up system works is your character's experience of course so the more you do stuff for each level the more experience you'll get every time you level up you unlock kind of like an ability that kind of helps you that you unlock at certain levels so you'll have like level three level four level six unlocks level 10 all the way up to level 30 for now i don't know if they're going to change that in the game or not we're gonna have to wait to see since this is in beta form still you also can eventually find equipment that you can put onto your characters so when you get equipment it obviously makes you stronger gives you special abilities and whatnot you also level up your cards I guess is what they would say, which are your sorceries and your creature spells, which will level up over time the more and more you use them. They will level up and then they'll do more damage or they'll get more health if it's a creature or they'll do more damage if it's a sorcery, etc, etc. This game does have a lot to offer. Um, there are a lot of things you can do. Um, remember, I, like I said, this is in beta form, so things can change. They can take away things. They can put more things. This is an RPG based off the trading card game Magic the Gathering, which if you love Magic the Gathering, you're going to kind of like this game just because it shows cards in real life or at least made into a video game so you can actually see them play out which is kind of a fun thing that they did the leveling up your cards or abilities in in this instance is also fun because you get to see the cards you play with in real life used in an actual game too like i said and like i said earlier it's free so nothing beats free bruh